Hello and welcome to my Haskell tutorial series. Um, so the motivations behind the series are, firstly, I think a lot more people should know Haskell. It's a fantastic language and it um, it really changes the way you think about programming. And I, I, I think it's good to know even if you don't plan on using it. Um, but also I, I think there's a bit of a gap in the uh, tutorial market. Uh, there's loads of small tutorials. Um, None of them are comprehensive, I don't think. None of them will take you from, um, well, no knowledge, where I'm starting, all the way up to type-level programming. And um, my plan is to make a, a much more, just a much big, much more big tutorial series than there are currently on the internet. Um, and that's because as soon as you get past the basic building blocks, um, there's this massive difficulty gap between basic Haskell and sort of Chad level Haskell. Um, and the reason for that is because all of these tutorial series um, or, or blog posts really with Haskell um, assume you know things that you just don't. And it's not at all obvious that you don't know these things yet. And I don't know, it's, it's very difficult to find a good order to read things in. Um, so I, yeah, I thought I'd make this. And I, I, I'd also make it a bit more practical. Um, so we're starting with actually the build system of Haskell, um, how to build projects. Um, so that from, from the get go, you have a very much usable, applicable knowledge set. Um, so yes, today we're going to be talking about the, um, the tooling. Lovely. So, uh, the compiler that we're going to be using is GHC. There aren't that many options for compiler with Haskell. Um, Great tool. Um, you'll be able to install that from your package manager. I'm kind of assuming that you're using a Unix distro. If you're not, I'm sure you can work out how to translate to Windows. You're probably used to doing that. Um, and yeah, so GHC is the compiler. Um, we're gonna have, um, we need a tool called um, either Cable or Cabal. I don't know how you say it. I'll probably say it both ways, depending on how I feel. Um, so that's normally on your package manager as uh, cable install. That's normally what it's called. Oh, install. There we go. Um, and then there's also stack, which you install uh, differently. Um, just go online. I, I don't know how to use it. I've never bothered to learn. We're not going to use it. It's it's um, almost like a replacement from for, for using cable as your uh, sort of project manager. So... Um, I, th I think Cable was terrible not too long ago, but I, it's really good now. So uh, I never bothered to learn Stack. So uh, yeah, let's get going. So um, I'm, in a I'm in a tutorials folder here, and in this folder I have tutorial one. Um, now I'm gonna make a new project uh, called tutorial one. Um, and the way we do that is we go into said folder, nothing in it, I've not done any initial setup and we type uh, cabal in it. Now, because I, so this is gonna error for me, and that's because I have a bash alias that adds dash o2 to cabal. So um, I'll tell you why I do that another time. But, um, so I have to put a slash in front of some of these cabal commands. If you've not added an alias, you won't have to do that. Um, great, so it says it's generating some stuff. Lovely, let's have a look. Um, we have changelog.md, fine. Um, we never, well, you can use that. It's good if you're actually publishing something um, to use that. Um, we have main.hs, which is our main source file. Um, we can have a look at that. So it's, I think it's just a hello Haskell application, nice and simple. Um, we have, what else do we have? Setup.hs. So um, we don't use this, um, or we won't. Um, you use this if you're sort of customizing how Cabal builds stuff. The reasons you might want to do that are, um, for example, there's a library that will automatically package uh, Debian files. Quite cool. Um, and there's an option to use it in the build system by... Uh, importing that library and changing your setup.hs. 
Um, there's another one for packaging uh, Mac applications. Um, so libraries like, uh, for example, the CUDA libraries, um, it does binding generation in setup.hs and um, it has to do custom things like finding where CUDA is installed on your computer. Um, but we're not actually going to use this. So we leave it as is. It needs to be there, but we're never going to touch it. And then there's uh, tutorial tutorial.1.kabar. Uh, Here, this is the file that we will be changing. Um, and it's uh, it's pretty simple. I don't think uh, we're going to go through it much um, now. We'll more change things as we need to. Um, great. Um, so I'm now, I'm now going to show you another way of doing this. Um, so it's assumed a lot of things about my project that maybe I disagree with. Um, so, or, or, you know, maybe there are some defaults I want in my Cabal file that I can't actually be bothered to write myself. So let, let's start a game. So let's remove all of these things. Um, great. So um, this time, Cabal init dash I for interactive. Now it's going to ask me, should I generate a simple project with sensible defaults? If we hit enter, it's going to do exactly what it did last time. So we're going to say no. And now, here we go. Are we going to be building an executable library, library and executable? We'll stick with executable. Um, what's going to be the main source file? That's fine. Keep it as the default. Don't care. That's fine. Uh, license. This is a nice one um, because by default, it didn't... Uh, Generate a license file, didn't assume, but I'm going to go for GPL3 uh, for the win. Uh, that is my name. Uh, that isn't my email anymore. So I'll put my email in. Utron.com. Uh, don't have one of those. Uh, don't care. I can categorize it. This is quite nice. So this is um, automatically moving your source file into a source directory, which is, I believe, good practice. So I'm going to select option two and uh, everything else is fine. And then nicely, I can actually get it to add comments to my Cabal file, which I will get it to do for this. No synopsis. OK, so now let's, um, instead of having a main.hs file, I have a source uh, dash exe um, file. So that's quite nice. So and in there. We have the main.hs file. Cool. So now let's have, what should we do next? Ooh, we could talk about building. Um, so to build your project, cabal v2 dash build. And uh, this is going to go ahead and it's going to find any dependencies I've listed, install them, and then build my project. Um, if I replace that with run, it's going to, first of all, check to see if it needs to rebuild. That's why it says up to date. And then it's going to run my application. Hello, Haskell. Um, say I wanted to pass command line arguments. I have to go dash dash and then tutorial one, because that's the name of the executable, and then any arguments go here. You see it does exactly the same thing. Now, this is all well and good, but it's not completely clear where my executable is. Um, and that, you know, it's quite a good thing to find. You don't really want to be running Cabal v2 run forever to run all of your projects. So, um, and it does build it into a strange place. I don't understand how Cabal does its building. Um, but we'll use find. So we know it's called tutorial one. Um, its type is a file. And there it is. Completely mad. Um, so if you, if you ever want to do sort of automatic packaging, uh, I suggest you have a find command like this in maybe a make file. And then you can go exec copy like this. Cool. So now that we've run that, we have tutorial one here. We can run that just like the executable file it is. I'll remove it for now. Cool. So, um, yes, next it might, ha yes. So we're actually not going to be, we're not going to be using Cabal build for a while. Um, 
And the reason for that is because input and output in Haskell is um, in the beginning a bit of a mystery and it's it's not the thing that, that I plan on starting with. So we're going to be stuck in the REPL uh, for quite a while. So if I go cabal v2 REPL, it'll open um, GHCI Interactive. Very nice. Um, this is what we're going to be using the most and this is where I can um, interact with my program in a much better way. Um, very good for debugging. And the nice thing about using, instead of just typing GHCI in the command line, uh, cabal v2 REPL, that will make sure that all of my dependencies are loaded into that environment. Now, um, in the REPL, I can go colon e, um, and that's gonna edit, in this case, the main file. There we go. And uh, say I change this to the more standard world. When I quit, it's gonna reload it. Um, it might say that your editor isn't set. Um, you can set that, um, I think it's um, dot .ghci. You can set it in here, which is quite nice. So I've got a custom prompt and uh, yes, I've set my default editor to NeoVim. Um, yeah. If you ever add dependencies to the Cabal file, then you'll need to uh, restart the REPL. And I think that's, have I, have I covered all the things? No, I've not. One more thing. So um, if I go into uh, my source folder, I have a main.hs file. And in here, we have some Haskell code. Now, comments in Haskell, just so you know, um, are normally, for single line comments, you start the line with dash dash. Uh, and for multi-line comments, um, how do you do multi-line comments? It's, ah, uh, yes, uh, curly brackets, dash, you know, like this. Hello, multi-line, whatever. Vim has done some interesting things with the indentation there, but uh, that's how we do multi-line comments in Haskell. Um, but Haskell is quite a sort of, um, quite a formal language, quite a mathematical language, and often you're writing extremely concise code that does one hell of a lot. And in those situations, you're actually writing more comments than you are writing code, especially if you want your program to be studied. So there's another, um, there's another file format for Haskell, and that's, um, so let's, Let's just move, change the name. So that's LHS. Um, it means literal Haskell. Now, um, if I now try and um, go back into the REPL, it's gonna error on me because they, these files have a slightly different syntax, which is quite interesting. Um, yep. You see, it's, it's, oh, it's failed for a different reason actually to the one I expected. Um, <laughs> I forgot to tell, ooh, oh, it's added all the comments. That's why it's so large. Uh, I forgot to tell it that, um, what's this? Contain the main module. So main is LHS. There we go. I think that's all I need to change. Yep. Um, anyway, it's still going to error now that I've updated my cabal file. Um, it has, it has absolutely no idea what's going on is what that error says. Uh, unlit, failed in phase, literate preprocessor. Now, I shall show you how that we how we fix that. So in LHS files, we actually comment what lines are code. Um, so here I've just added a line. This is obviously invalid Haskell, but on these lines that start with a greater than sign, these will be understood as Haskell and anything else will be ignored. So now it works, you know, pretty sweet. Um, say you want to, so, so this is used often for generating um, sort of instructional Haskell documents. So the rules for this is uh, you can't, I, could, I can't do this. Um, let me just, uh, I don't know. I can't do this. I need to have 
um, at least one line between some Haskell code and uh, some comments. So this is valid, this isn't valid, that's not valid either. Um, that's one way of marking Haskell code. The other way is um, if I go begin code and then end code. So this is sort of the latex style way of doing it. Um, so yes, it's still syntax highlights, nice. Um, so this means that uh, there's actually ways, and you can look this up online, of um, getting minted in LaTeX to uh, syntax highlight uh, your anything in between slash begin code and slash end code. And then the Haskell language will also understand that. So it's, it's a great way of making documents that can be compiled to PDFs and be manuals. Um, and the same file can be compiled to binary and you can run it. It's quite interesting. Um, and I think that's all we need to know for tutorial one, uh, a bit about the tooling. So in the next tutorial, I plan on doing it on functions and lists and sort of suggesting towards a different way of thinking about programming. Um, thank you for listening. See you next time.